Hi, I'm Brian Sullivan, and welcome to another video tutorial on VSTV. Today we'll be looking at how to digitize HDV footage into Final Cut Pro. Let's get started. So here we are in Final Cut Pro. The first thing that you want to do after opening the program is to go up to the Final Cut Pro menu and select Audio Video Settings. Now here at the top, we want to uh, select our sequence preset as Apple ProRes 422, 1920 by 1080, 60i, 48 kilohertz. So every time you create a new sequence, this will be the preset. Next, we have Capture Preset. Now this is important. You want to select HDV Apple ProRes 422. And then for Device Control Preset, we'll choose Sony HDV Firewire here at the bottom. Click OK. Now I have a cassette loaded in the deck. Now we'll go up to the file menu and select log and capture. See so HDV capture, we can enter in a file name and we will call this helicopter landing 01 for example. And you can click capture. Now the deck is automatically connected. It queues up the footage and now it's capturing it to the hard drive. So we'll just wait till this helicopter lands. Okay, please note, I guess, that while you're recording, you can just press escape to end that um, digitization, and you can go back to file, log and capture, and then uh, digitize your next clip. Okay, so now that that's uh, digitized, we'll go back up to the Final Cut Pro menu and select User Preferences. And you'll notice that I had checked, okay, abort capture on dropped frames. So if there's a problem with the footage, uh, the capture will, will end. And then also it says on time code break, make new clip. This means that whenever you start or stop the VTR on the camera, um, it will create a, a little signal for your editing program to create a new clip every time there's a new shot. So that's important. I guess that's it for this menu. Okay, so you'll see that helicopter landing has uh, showed up here in my project bin. We've already created a folder called project name media. So within that folder, you can create a new bin and call this HDV footage or whatever name makes sense to you. And uh, it's always good to just drag that clip into that folder there. And then uh, we'll create a new sequence, file, new sequence, call this raw footage. Okay, you can double click that to open it up. First thing you wanna do is to go up to the sequence menu and select settings. Here we just wanna ensure that all the settings are correct. So. We had set it to be Apple ProRes 422 1920 by 1080i, even though HDV footage is recorded at 1440 by 1080. Um, we'll select OK and I'll show you the difference. So when I drag that footage onto this timeline, you'll get this window that says for best performance, your sequence and external video should be set to the format of the clip you're editing change the sequence setting to match the clip settings, you can select yes or no. Now for this time, I'm gonna select no. This will be essentially expanding the frame to full 1920 by 1080i. Now this could be probably handy if you want a clean export for the web. You'll notice that there's a green line above your footage. That means that it's not fully rendered at this point, but it still plays back smoothly enough to be able to, to edit your project. There you go. And then once you've made all of your selections, then you can select all your footage on your timeline. And if you go up to sequence, render all, all of these settings are checked here. They should all be checked to be able to get a full quality render. So I'll select render all both. And that will go through the, the process of rendering your timeline. It can take some time. So I'll just cancel it for now. 
but you'll see just that first little chunk here at the beginning rendered. Now it shows as blue for that portion. You also want to ensure that you go up to sequence, settings, and render control. And here, see the codec is selected same as sequence codec, but it's always wise to change that to Apple ProRes 422. I think it speeds up the uh, rendering. I guess on timeline options while we're in here, you can select your starting time code to be whatever you want. So we can just change it to zero for now. Select OK. And now you can get start cutting your project. Once you're all finished, then you want to go to the beginning of your edit. Select I for in. Then you go to the end of your project. Select O for out. And you see that it's created a range on your timeline. So now you can go up to File, Export, QuickTime Movie. And then you'd probably want to create a new folder in your project called Final Exports. And then you can name your project whatever you want. So we'll call it Heli Final. And then click Save. And that will render a full quality clip to your set folder. And I'll just stop that right now. If you're planning on uploading this clip to YouTube, then what you'd want to do is open MPEG Stream Clip, which is a free conversion program. MPEG Stream Clip. And this opens up. You can go to File, Open Files then find your export. So for this example, I'll just use um, one of these MP4s. Open. So let's just pretend this is your final movie. So you've loaded it in there. Now you want to go to File, Export to MPEG4, which is the format that YouTube uses. The compressor is H.264. That's good. But we can always go to this iTunes tab, and there's a trick here. You want to get closest to your format as possible. So if we want to go YouTube HD, we'll just select this Apple TV 1280 by 720 HD. And click OK. Now that's not the right frame size. So the first thing you want to do is to go to Other and type in 1920 by 1080. The uh, data rate, we could probably afford to knock that up to 10 megabytes per second. Okay, and this will show you the, the approximate size of your final clip. Now you can boost the quality up to max as well. And audio, you could probably get away with knocking that down to 128. And that's still pretty good quality. We won't be scaling the project at all. It's full quality. So we'll deselect interlace scaling. Yeah, that's pretty much all you need to know. Then you can click Make MP4, select the location that you want that clip to go to, and click Save. So that's about it. There are a number of different ways to capture or transfer footage into Final Cut Pro, which we'll go over in future tutorials. If you have any tips and tricks or comments you'd like to share, please feel free to post them on the website. And don't forget to check out the blog for more video production, post-production, and motion graphics tutorials at briansullivan.tv. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.